sir. Good to have you here, Fergie. Have a seat. Thank you. Clark. Well, thanks, Clark. Appreciate that. And uh, guy's a little psycho. But um, <laughs> good to have you here, Fergie Mesa Morning Live. Welcome back to Mesa, Arizona, where I'm sure you're here every spring training. Well, I live here in the valley. Oh, uh, do you really? Well, I live in Anthem. It's out of the valley. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know where that is. Yeah. It's uh, uh, just south of, of Flagstaff. Yeah. I know where yeah. you are. Yeah. Well, good yeah, to be right. here. I bet you have um, some great spring training memories of, of training here in the valley. Well, first I came of all, out here in the 60s, in the 60s. With, with Leo DeRocher, quite a few players. You know, Ron Santo was a diabetic. Oh, that's uh, right. For, for umpteen years. I mean, he didn't let anybody know until like his second or third year uh, with the ball club <coughs> that he was a diabetic. And he'd had it since he was 14, a teenager. Is that right? I didn't uh, really. really. Uh, and he was kind of an individual that, uh, that uh, controlled it. And he was a, one heck of an athlete. Well, that's, that's awesome. Well, welcome back uh, this year for the Cubbies. And uh, uh, now, give us a quick little brief rundown of your career. I know you played for other teams. Do you I originally signed, uh, I'm a Canadian, okay. signed out of Canada with the Phillies, right out of high school at 18. Got traded to the Cubs in 66. Stayed with them uh, well over 10 years. And uh, played six years with the Ranger organization, a couple years Boston. And uh, ended my career as a Cub, went in the Hall of Fame as a Chicago Cub. And rightly so, yeah. <laughs> What, um, how many career wins did you have? I'm gonna hit you with some numbers. 284. 284, wow, big time. And uh, of course, you're Canadian, so with the exchange rate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe 260. 260 ish. <laughs> that is awesome. And do uh, you have any great uh, spring training? I know you're, we're gonna talk about your, your foundation here in a second, because that's huge in, in, your, in your daily life, but any uh, great. Uh, Observations of how the valley's changed since you came out here in the 60s? Oh, man. <laughs> Dirt roads, hitching rails. Wow. The Pink Pony was the, the big uh, restaurant to go to sure. in Scottsdale. And as the, the whole camp said, uh, the ballpark uh, was a wooden stadium on uh, Miller Road and Osborne. And now yeah. the Giants have taken it over. They've really reconstructed it. But uh, we had a boys club <laughs> right behind the, the the right field wall, which I used to go back and play basketball all the time after spring training. But uh, the, the city, Scottsdale, Mesa has really changed. Uh, right. The roadways are incredible. There used to be two lane roads, and now they're four and five. <laughs> and, you know, they get so many people that are, that are coming out here in the valley to, to see so many teams. Like they said, there was only three teams, Cubs, Giants, and Oakland. Wow. And now there's 15. Wow. So. Well, that's, that speaks. Um to a lot of things. It speaks to our climate, our weather, our, our hospitality industry, and also just uh, people like this that do the work of talking to teams and sure. convincing them to come out. So, Well, yeah, there's more ball clubs that should come out here. Toronto should be out here, and, and so should uh, the Astros. They have terrible stadiums in Florida. Terrible. They should come out. They built a stadium in one year here, a complex, really, that would uh, probably house uh, a couple more ball clubs. It'd be nice to have more teams here. Yes, it would. Well, now, you're a Canadian. Can't you work on Toronto? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'd be nice if I could, yeah. And, and now, where do, the, uh, where do the Astros train? I think they're in Kissimmee. See, and, and that doesn't even sound right. Yeah, right. Kissimmee Astros. All <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, that is, if you... A little early for that. Yeah, All right. right. Okay. <clears throat> well, how's this for a pleasant segue? Tell us about your foundation, Fergie. What's, uh, what are you doing there, and, and why? Well, we've had our foundation well over 19 years raised more than uh, $5 million. And we're at Sloan Park, the majority of the games. Uh, we've had uh, so many different players come in. Gaylord Perry, Rod Carew, Bert Campanaris. Uh, you name the fellas. Uh, Bill Buckner was an ex-Cub. We get guys, or, or, or Lee Smith, and we basically sell memorabilia to so many good fans that come out and purchase. Uh, maybe a shirt or a ball, a, a cap. And uh, the money goes to different charities, from Cub Care, Special Olympics, JDRF, Make-A-Wish, Boys and Girls Camps, and uh, we're in uh, Peoria, which is the Diamond Club. We, we donate quite a bit of money to them also. That's awesome. So it's been fun doing it. I, I, I enjoy it. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> <laughs> the 
so uh, I've always been curious about this. You went into the Hall of Fame as a Cub. Yes. Because I think that's the most identifiable, uh, yeah. identifiable well, team. Yeah, well, my longest career was with the, with the Chicago Cubs. That's, that's great. Now, do, is there, if somebody's got different teams that they played for, do they ask you what team you want to go in? Well, when uh, Rod Carew and Gaylord Perry and I went in in 91, uh, they asked us at a press conference what cap and logo we'd like to have represented for the team we're And we made that decision. Now it's not the player's decision because a lot of times the Hall of Fame has tried to interact because of the fact that, you know, you, you take a guy like uh, Andre Dawson, who signed originally with Montreal, along with Gary Carter. Those are two individuals that are Montreal uh, Hall of Famers. Uh, so it's really changed some. They, they really don't give you that opportunity to say, hey, I want to be a Dodger or I want to be an Astro or whatever. But uh, it's changed a bit. But uh, in, in the era that I went in, in 91, I was happy to, to be a Chicago Cub. Absolutely. Why wouldn't you be? What, uh, I know you're a modest man, so this might be, and, and we didn't plan this, so I'm going to throw you a little curveball here. All right. What, uh, uh, what was your what was your out pitch, by the way? Who's who's? What was the pitch you went to when you had to get us? Uh, well, when I was younger, uh, I had a good thinking fastball. Okay. Uh, I developed a pretty good slider my second, third year. I developed it in winter ball with Cal McClish, a pretty. Uh, uh, I think he was a famous pitching coach with the Phillies. I went to winter ball in Puerto Rico, developed a slider, and the slider got me to the big leagues, I think. But I still was a a pitcher that got ahead of people with a fastball. And who was the one guy you didn't want to face if the game was on the line? Just everybody has that guy that they just, for some reason, you, you know what I'm going to say here. Who's the guy you didn't want to face? Well, there were a couple of guys. Uh, Roberto Clemente was tough. Yeah. They were on in our everybody. division, number 21. <laughs> and then the Western Division was probably Willie McCovey with the Giants, sure. number 44. Sure. And he was out here in spring training, so I've seen him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we're both retired, though. <laughs> he can't hit he can't get any more hits off me anymore. You know? Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not, you look like you could go out and throw nine today, man. You look uh, like you're no. in great shape. Uh, no, I just <laughs> had a bone spur in, removed from my shoulder. My arm was in a sling earlier. Uh, I thought maybe you pitched yesterday and you were just giving it a day uh, No, no. <laughs> uh, I'm getting ready for golf. That's the reason why. Ah, uh -huh, there we go. I had to get it done. Where do you, where do you play? Where do you like to play? Uh, they, they got a couple of country clubs there uh, where I'm at, in Anthem, uh, Persimmon and Ironwood. So I, I try to get out there and play as much as I can. Uh, with this bone spur, it kind of restricted me from doing a lot of things I wanted to do. But now I've taken care of it. Uh, I'll be playing more golf come summer. I'm going to give you a little hint. See sure. these guys out here? A lot of these guys are members of really great golf courses in the Yeah, nice I can area. believe that, yeah. yeah but so I need to hint. Yeah, just talk stick to around, them. get All some right. business cards, they'll take yeah, you out. Right. Okay. <laughs> hey, if you could. Uh, if you could design the back of your, your baseball card with some of the things you're proudest of, and, and this is where I was getting, I know you're a modest guy, but what's the, what's the one thing that when you sit back and look at your career, you say, you know what, I can't believe that. That's awesome. I'm glad I did that. Well, I was the first Cub to win the Cy Young. First there you Chicago go. Cup. That was an honor. Uh, you know, I tell people, you can't do it alone. As a pitcher, you have to wait for your, your teammates to, to play for you. Uh, Offense and defense. Glenn Beckard was my best man. I've known Glenn Beckard over 50 years, second baseman for the sure. Cubs. Uh, a room with Ernie Banks the last three years he played. Mr. Play Cub. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just think that, uh, you know, you play the game to have fun. Uh, now it's a big business with a lot of money involved. Uh, I had some great teammates. Uh, I had uh, the late Jim Bibby in Texas, uh, Dewey Evans in, in Boston. So you could pick your own roommate if you wanted. Then Back then you had roommates. Yeah. And guys protected each other. You played the game for each other. Uh, you played the game for your family, the team, and, and your teammates. Uh, now it's totally different. With these million dollar salaries, guys million. Play for the, they play for their bank account. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know what, I, I, I saw guys joking one time, said if, uh, if Joe DiMaggio was alive today, what do you think? Um, his salary would be, and somebody said, I don't know, like $50 million, and he said, and, he said, and that's not bad for a guy who'd be 95. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever he would. Yeah, you're right. But, yeah, it's, yeah. it's crazy money, but it is a business, but uh, no, boy, yeah. you know what? Uh, I remember you, um, the way you played, you played, uh, you played baseball for all the right reasons. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, uh, winning ball games, uh, uh, it, it, it's kind of a satisfaction thing when the game's over and you're celebrating with your teammates, and the articles the next day 
don't reflect the guys that got you to that win. Well, it could have been a double by Beckert or a home run by Billy Williams or a double play situation by Kessinger. So, I mean, it's, it's all different and it's tied together. But if you understand that it's a team sport, then you understand what the game's all about. Well, I think that's what makes baseball. You know, I love all sports, but boy, if you really understand baseball, um, there's just no game like it. And, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. And Fergie, we can't thank you enough for coming in. Right. I, I, thank take you. Take care of your, uh, your shoulder, well, and uh, let's yeah. see you out on the golf course. All right, sounds good. Thank you, sir. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I will. Thank you. Oh, you know what? I forgot to ask him. You know what, um, Fergie? Is this true? You played for the Globetrotters a couple of years? Yeah, I played three years with them. That was my off-season wow. job. See, uh, in my era, we had to work in the off-season. Yeah. And I, <laughs> and I tell people I was a terrible car salesman. <laughs> so, so the Globetrotters was, was kind of the thing that I liked to do. Uh, Metal Lark, uh, Lemon, and Curly Neal, Jackie Jackson, all the guys. I had an opportunity to play with them uh, from 67 through 69. That's awesome. Yeah. Fergie Jenkins. How awesome is that? You know, I'm going to win the Cy Young, and then what am I going to do this offseason? Oh, I think I'm just going to play with the Harlem Globetrotters. <laughs> Don't see guys doing that this day. All right, well, hey, this is a whole baseball theme. We thought we would come up with this.